the previous videos, we mentioned about designing a reinforced concrete structures with the aid of software. Nowadays, the software is very powerful as it can give you a complete cycle of the design process starting from the modeling, data input, analyzing, processing and producing the results and even provide you details. We mentioned about the detailing produced by the software. It is still very raw, which requires post-processing and final check. You will need to process the detailings to make it more friendly to the contractors. And also you need to perform structural check onto the design outcome and always correlate with the conditions of the structure, fitting the NICs particularly the features which are quite unique to the structures as defined by the architect that may involve additional loads not in the conventional manner which you might need to add in additional reinforcement bar or modify the sections of the members to ensure the stability of the members there could be some areas which you would like to have higher degree of conservativeness which made this post-processing and the final structural check important after you have acquired the detailings from the software. Now we will look into in details what kind of post-processing that may involve onto the detailings as produced by the software. This is just to give you some ideas how it is being done or what it should be done and it is very much dependent on different types of the projects as well as the conditions of the structures and also based on the software that you are using we're going to look into this one by one first we look at the structural plan which you need to incorporate the drawing blocks and details you're going to put the project titles drawing numbers pages date clients, scales and etc. You know that the drawings produced by the software are all raw drawing, which at the end of the day, you need to process everything, group them together, arrange it and make it presentable under proper project titles and drawing numbers. You expect there are so many pages of the drawing produced because a typical RC structures consists of a lot of elements where every single element will have their own technical drawing in terms of the detailings there should be proper sorting in terms of the information to be given in the structural drawings you should provide a detailed list in terms of the drawings give general notes provide typical details and other relevant notes for the contractor to refer especially the things that to be standardized throughout the entire structure you need to tidy up the key plan which as we have demonstrated in the previous videos key plan without proper post processing it will seem rather messy and you need to include the necessary architectural fixtures such as the staircase the drops the ramps the fins, the offset dimensions and etc. You also need to tidy up the grid lines, the line types, the weight of the line, the beam size. In the case that you have curved beam which you are unable to model it, you might need to make some modifications in terms of the layout of the beam. You will need to check the levels for the foundations and columns especially when you do the classifications of the foundations and columns limiting the numbers of the sizes to be adopted throughout the entire project and provide off-grid dimensions to the members which is not actually in contact with the grid it is to clearly indicate that the exact locations of the members as an example um, process key plan may look something like this and after proper processing, the key plan becomes neat. This is so that it is more friendly to the readers of the technical drawing.
to be able to quickly retrieve the necessary information from your technical drawing. Next, we look at the beam, which you need to tidy up and arrange the beam as necessary, where you need to remove the unnecessary or overlaying lines and text, remove the repetitive cross sections and etc. Check the beam level, is it in line with your key plan? Check the grid line and the numbers. Check the top and bottom lapping length of the reinforcement bar. Check the maximum length of the bar cannot exceed 12 meters. Check the 20% hanger bar. We mentioned about this 20% hanger bar in the previous videos. Also check the crack control bar for the deep beam which you can limit it maximum 250mm center to center check the continuous members and also check the cantilever beams if necessary you need to add in additional reinforcement bar as normal engineers will do as a precautions to compensate the risk of poor workmanship especially when the reinforcement bar are at the top of the beam which normally fall within the poor bone conditions and you need to check for the structural integrity try to avoid these double cantilever conditions we also mentioned about this in our previous videos that the double cantilever's design will be very risky as you cannot rely on the loops especially when a large portion of it are the imposed loot to counteract each others. These are the beams as produced by the software, which later you need to process it and arrange it properly in the drawing so that they are neat and easy to refer. Next, we will proceed with the columns. You will need to do some grouping and renumbering of the columns and then produce the column schedules. Check if there are any necessary stiffness. Make sure the relevant information are provided. As an example, you have so many columns produced by the software, which you reprocess it and reduce the numbers of the columns. Next, we go for the foundations. Similar concept apply. You will need to group and renumber the foundations and probably you need to edit the foundation details in terms of the dimensions, lapping as well as incorporate the beams of it for a better graphical presentation to the contractors. As for the slabs, check the slab detailings, put double layer of Y10 150 for waterproofing purposes especially at the space which is designated for the toilet, for the flat roof, for the balcony, and etc. Sometimes, it is inevitable for you to have slab with perfect square and rectangular. This leads to a situation that the reinforcement bar on the slab, when joined with the adjacent slab, there will be some crossing of the reinforcement bar. In this case, the detailing needs to be properly indicated. Also, you need to check the overlapping and curtailing of the reinforcement bar. And sometimes you need to check for the second drop if necessary. Sometimes in the toilet, there will be first layer of drop. And then later, near to the shower, there is another additional drop. In this case, the cross section of the slab need to clearly indicate the existence of the drops. That would be the second drops. These are the examples of the slab cross sections, which are neatly arranged for the reference of the contractors. Next, we go for the staircase. You need to indicate the locations of the staircase in the structural key plan. You need to design the reinforcement bar for the staircase. Check the staircase detailings in terms of the reinforcement bar, the curtailment, the grid line, the level, and etc. Design for the landing beam, 
design for the stiffener if necessary and so on so far as an example these are the detailings of the staircase which should be clearly indicated in terms of the dimensions the reinforcement bar and properly leveled some project may require you to have load bearing wall in the existence of the load bearing wall you will need to design and check the wall panels detailings as well as check the wall foundations especially for the high-rise building with leaf shaft there will also be the architecture features you have to be careful with those features such as fin, parapet walls and etc be careful with the RC gutter and also check the detailings that you're going to embed into those architecture features this kind of architecture features normally cannot be modeled by the software as it is too detailed and sometimes the shapes are too complex therefore it will be best on your technical knowledge as well as the experience for you to propose appropriate reinforcement bar on basis of some simple calculations and when you are in confidence with your design most likely you're going to go for a more conservative arrangement in terms of the reinforcement bar maybe you might need to check also for the sagging and hogging bar which it shouldn't vary too significantly try to avoid Y25 and R8 for the beam 150mm width the main reason it will be due to limited width of the beam when you provide Y25 which at the same time the shear length is R8 there is a chance of insufficient spacing between the reinforcement bar for the concrete to flow through during casting and compaction of the members you need to be careful of this unless you are able to properly analyze the load and you are confident with the accuracy in terms of your analysis then you can design economically otherwise it is okay for you to make it slightly more conservative after all these architecture features need to be there as long as the structures exist it is also another important aspect of the structures next you might need to do some simple structural checks especially when you have beams more than 3 meters most likely the minimum bar size it will be Y16 or if you have beams of long span which you might have some concern with the deflection as well as the quality of the workmanship probably you can consider to size up the bar or providing additional bar you might need to also consider this torsional effects of some beams which based on your observations and do necessary adjustment to strengthen the part especially for those which you feel is going to be quite critical or you are lacking of the confidence one more thing here sometimes during your post processing that you do it halfway already you realize that there are some errors or mistakes which require you to redo the modeling although the revisions can be quite minor however that revisions may lead to the chain reactions that influence the members nearby or adjacent to it remember when you do the modifications even though it is minor modifications probably you change the dimensions of the member or you change the span of the member or you change the locations of the members this will lead to the redistributions of the stress which may lead to different design and since that you have done your work halfway that you done this post processing process on so many structural elements you might need to do some quick check in terms of the implications of the revisions onto the other members in case that there are some changes in terms of the detailing make sure you have those revised together you need to imagine what are the implications of certain modifications and when you choose to keep those what you have processed 
make sure you are able to identify all the possible implications and modify the detailings appropriately. This may involve checking the appropriate beam size and slab size or checking the incoming beam size and even checking of the detailings and the reinforcement or positions of the adjacent members as reflected by the members nearby. This normally happens and you know that normally we can't do everything in the perfect manner at one go. Even though we reach to a stage that we are satisfied with our model, which when we go for the post-processing, we realize that sometimes we overlook certain things and it will be very tedious for you to redo and restart the post-processing process. This can be rather frustrating. In order to maintain the productivity, most likely you do some quick checking, make sure all changes due to the adjustment are fully located and identified.